Hello class. Welcome to sort of the introduction to basic of argumentation, which is what this whole class is about. Everything in this class is all arguments all the time. It's, that's what the curriculum for 110 is. And the reason it is is because arguments are really sort of what you're going to make in almost every class. Even in classes where um, you wouldn't think that you're making an argument, really kind of you are. Because you're saying, this is my opinion, here's why I'm right, here's what the evidence says that supports what I'm saying. All right, and then in this class, you're going to learn about four different models of argumentation. All right, but the first thing you need to know is that an argument does not have to be shouty, but it does have to be debatable. All right, it has to have two sides. You can't just say 3 times 3 equals 10, fight me. Because 3 times 3 does not equal 10, 3 times 3 equals 9, it is a fact, it is not debatable, it is not, you know, it is not an opinion, right? It just is true, All right? And for those of you math types who are like, oh, well, what if you use base 8 math or something like that? I don't understand base 8 math. It is considered acceptable to believe that 3 times 3 equals 9. Let's just move right on. All right, so... Let's go on to the next piece. Now, all arguments have to be debatable, but they are all built on certain things. All right, and one of those things is a thesis. Now, the thesis statement is one sentence, right? And it basically says, this is the argument I'm saying, this is my opinion, and these are the reasons why I think I am right. All right, it is traditionally a long sentence, right? And every body paragraph should reflect back to the thesis statement. Right, and that, that, is, that is an important piece because the thesis statement, if you think about it like a map to the whole paper, right, then the topic sentences are sort of like the individual roads getting to the map. Okay, so we're going to learn about four different arguments, and the four arguments we're going to learn about are deductive arguments, refutation arguments, inductive arguments, and Rogerian arguments. So I'm going to visit this later, but let's focus just on deductive arguments because that's what this lecture is about. All right, so the deductive argument thesis statement is just really what it says is, this is my opinion, these are the reasons I'm right. All right, so my example here is schnauzers are the best dogs, that's my opinion. And I think that they are the best dogs because they are smart, tenacious, and independent. All right? That's my argument. These are the reasons I'm right. All right. We're going to skip to the rest of these until we come back around to them. All right. So another basics of any argument. All right. Doesn't matter what type of argument has to do with evidence. All right. You can't just say because I said so. None of you are my mom. All right. So evidence is how you support it. And they sort of fall under three major categories. Um, so logos, that's your logic. That's, those are facts, statistics, explanations, all right? Um, so it is a fact that schnauzers are bred for ratting, all right? That is not debatable. It's just, you know, that's true. All right, miniature schnauzers generally weigh between 10 and 20 pounds. That is true. That is a fact, all right? That can be used to support none of my actual arguments, um, why the schnauzers are the best dogs, but those are evidence of logic, all right? Those are logical supports. Okay, pathos is is your emotional attachment. This is a very powerful argument, and people are swayed by um, pathos, by emotional evidence, way more than they are by um, logos or ethos, um, because it touches our heartstrings. It's the stuff that is, well, I knew somebody who, right? Blah 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 blah. Right? Um, it's pictures, it's photographs, descriptions, beliefs, values. It's the stuff that sort of uh, creates our core identity and what we identify to. Um, and so um, th that's the evidence that you can appeal to, right, to get your audience to, to believe you. All right? Now, ethos is authoritative evidence. It's the expert opinion. So if you find a PhD who agrees with you, all right, then you are using the appeal to authority as the support, right? So for example, on Facebook right now, there's a meme going around where a conversation is like, you're not really going to listen to the CDC, are you? I mean, just because the CDC said it, are you just going to believe it? And the response is, yeah, kind of, they're the experts, right? They've been doing this their entire lives. This is what they studied. This is what they do all day long. I'm going to believe whatever the CDC tells me because I believe their expertise. And I think their expertise is better than your Google search on YouTube. Right? So, 
right? So um, the authoritative ev evidence is the expert opinion, right? And so using that kind of evidence can be very, very powerful, assuming, of course, that your audience doesn't just, you know, think that, I don't know, something completely ridiculous. And, you, you know, at which point you really got to gauge your audience. All right, I am assuming for the purpose of this class, that all of you are reasonable people who can lay out an argument and can support it with evidence and not just because I said so, because none of you are my mom. All right. Another piece of any kind of argument is the refutation. Now, remember the arguments are debatable, right? That means that there are two sides to any issue. Okay. So that means that there's somebody out there who disagrees with what you think is true. All right, now this does not have to be shouty. You don't have to be name calling, you're not trolling or anything like that. Um, but you do want to, in your paper, address that the, another side exists. All right, and I think this is probably where students most have trouble is that they, they are so used to living in their own sound chamber of only other people who agree with them say the same things over and over and over that when they hear a point of view that's different than their own, they just go, la, 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 I don't hear it, don't hear it, don't hear it, it doesn't exist, doesn't exist, I am a traitor if I hear a different point of view than my own. You are not a traitor if you hear a different point, or, point of view than your own. All right. In academia, all right, it is important to acknowledge that there is a different point of view and that that point of view can be valid and that point of view can actually um, make your belief stronger, can actually add something to it, all right? This is not black or white, all right, in any kind of shape or manner, all right? So and you need to include the, all those opposition points to demonstrate to me, your ultimate reader, but also to your classmates, that you are familiar with the entire topic, not just the point of view you agree with, okay? And you have to have support for those. You can't just say, oh yeah, and there's like these some people and they like totally believe X, Y, Z and ugh, whatever, All right? You actually have to do the research to say, why do these people believe blah, blah, blah. So it has to be well supported. Any opposition points you include need to be equally well supported and researched as your own. All right, that's going to be important, especially when we get to the inductive argument. All right, you can concede a point and still argue with it. You can still make another bid. All right, so here's my example again. So schnauzers are the best dogs because they're independents. All right, now an opposition point to that is that independence is another way of saying stubborn and hard-headed, which is true. All right, and you know, it is true. You know, they can be mad if they don't get their own way. All right, but if you can gain their trust, more willing to go along with your needs. Right. So think about the refutation sort of like a dinner conversation. You throw out an argument. Mandalorian is a great TV show. Your friend says, dude, I could not even get into it. Like I watched the first episode and I just, who cares about baby Yoda? All right. And then your response is, what do you mean? <laughs> How can you not care about baby Yoda? All right, or whatever. All right, so the opposition points, you know, is your friend, your refutation is what you say back, All right? And think about that in terms of, you know, those kind of dinner conversations that you have. Say, same sort of idea, except in academia. All right, but that, that's what an opposition, that's what a refutation is. And all of your papers are going to require you to do this. All right. And lastly, your concluding statement. Now, this just isn't is like in speech where we first tell you what we're going to tell you, then we tell you, and then we tell you what we told you. That's not the same thing as a concluding statement. Um, an argument, a concluding statement has to do with the applicability, right? Because arguments don't exist in a vacuum, right? You don't just randomly just start running up to people and make an argument, right? There has to have some sort of context, like before the Mandalorian came out, nobody was having a conversation about how good it is, right? Because they hadn't seen it yet. Right? It doesn't exist yet as a conversation topic. Um, so every any, any any argument you make is based somehow in the world, right? So your concluding statement sort of brings that back around to, so why does this matter? Right? How does this apply in the real world? How does this apply for the now? Right? And if you can start an essay with sort of the real world stuff, um, then you can bring it back around to why it matters now.
Okay. So those are your four basics of any argument, regardless what type of argument we're talking about, you have to have those four pieces. All right, but now let's turn to the deductive argument. Now the deductive argument is the one you're probably the most familiar with. Um, you should have seen probably this thesis, this outline here before, right? You got your introduction to the topic, right? Whatever your topic is. And then your thesis is your last sentence of the introduction. So I always say this is sort of like the diving board, right? Like you're walking up to the diving board is your introduction. When you jump off into the pool, that's the thesis, right? And then the pool is your body paragraphs, right? And these all support the thesis. So, um, and they have to be tied together, right? You can't just like have an argument that the Mandalorian is a great TV show and then the body paragraph starts talking about NCIS. Like they're both TV shows, but what do they have to do with it, one another, right? They have to tie together, All right? Then you've got your opposition paragraphs. So you got to have at least one paragraph explaining the other side of whatever your topic is, All right? And then your refutation argument, your paragraph here is taking apart the argument made by the opposition. So Mandalorian is a great show. Opposition paragraph, yeah, I just couldn't get into it because, you know, who cares about Baby Yoda? Your refutation is Baby Yoda is the epitome of cute and it, you know, it touches all of our little hearts because of those big eyes, those ears, um, it looks like a baby and all of us just sympathetically want to save it, all right? Um, so that's your refutation, okay? And then your conclusion. So you want to use a deductive argument, right, when your teachers assign it. Um, but also, this one's probably the one you're going to use the most in college because you get to use it for in-class writing. It gives you the easiest, quickest form, right, and it doesn't matter um, with this form really what you put into it. The beaker is the same. What you stick into it is what matters. Um, you use it for in-class writing. It's a quick five-paragraph essay, um, and the thesis does a really nice job of helping make sure that your um, organization stays, you know, really clear. Um, and you use it when there isn't a lot to the opposition points, right? Like, you know, it's hard to make an argument that um, that we should go to the base eight system of math, right? bringing us back around to the introduction here. Um, so it doesn't, it, it, yes, ancient cultures have done it, but it's hard to make that argument in modern day, right? And so, you know, when there's not a lot of opposition to the points, then you can make the argument that staying at the base 10, you know, version of math is probably the best thing to do since most of the world lives by the metric system, right? Um, so whatever it is, so that, that's when you want to use your deductive argument. All right, our first major paper is going to be about the product review, and the product review requires you to use this format um, to make your argument. All right, so for your argument, for your uh, product review, this right here is the outline that I'm looking for. Now, it doesn't only have to be seven paragraphs. You can stretch it if you have more points that you want to make. All right? Again, the beaker can be taller, but it keeps basically the same shape. If you have questions, let me know, and I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Ah, no.